Okay, so my name is Simon Katz. I was born in 1930 in Munkac. It used to be bef after the, wor the, uh, the, uh, the before the first um, world war. First world war, it belonged. The region belonged to Hungary, Austro-Hungarian monarchy, uh, imperi, imperi. So, and then as the war started and after Hungary were the losers, so they divided pieces by pieces. They took, took away from the Hungary, Czechs took away our region. It, we, we became Czech. Till 19, Czechoslovakia till 1938. My family, we had my father, we had a few, my father uh, handled uh, uh, with uh, animals, cows. Cattle. Cattle, cattle, yeah. He was very good at that. And besides, we had a few uh, acres of field what my mother sold slowly, every year more and more, because he was every every two three years he was in the army, he was in, in the army Czech Czech army, he, he was a chef in the kitchen. So and then came the Hungarians. He worked again. He worked the same thing. In the nineteen thirty six, I went to the first great Czech Czech. In, in the second also. And then it, and we had the, the town, Bunkach had approximately 30, 35,000 people. Half of them were Jews, half Gentiles. It was quite very good. It was life as, as I remember, I was wasn't there was we didn't know about anti-Semitism things like that. It was quite good. Maybe it was, but as I remember that time, as soon the whole the whole city was oriented on the on the Jews because when it came Friday, an hour and a half before the light. Before Shabbos, we had alarm. It means an hour left. So stores have to be closed, every store. The Gentiles and the Jews, everything was. Then the second, the second after that, a half an hour after the first one, we had another. So everything had to be closed. Police checked. If you are open, if the store is open, got a ticket. So that's how it was that time. No cars. Okay, that time we had very few cars, but no wagon, nothing no, it could move through the, the town. Everything was quiet. Shabbos, that's it. Besides that, we had a hider every morning. Every morning, four o'clock, my father woke us up. We had cattle, so we, had, we, had, we had, he had eight kids alive. One died, we had nine, but one died when he was born. We had eight kids, so the boys had to work. In the morning, you get up, you go, in the in 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 the barn, feed the feed the cows. We had ten, twelve cows every week. It's different. It depends how how much he bought and sold. You feed them, and we even start to milk milk. I was the oldest one among the boys. The girls they did do nothing outside, just inside. My mother sent that picture. In 1943 or 42, to him in the, in, in the working battalion where he worked. So 
So then you go to Kaider. You came back. Everything was closed. You came back, and everything goes fast. You you have something to eat, and then you go to school till twelve o'clock. Twelve o'clock, you go home. You eat whatever they give you lunch, and you go back to Hyder till six o'clock. Six o'clock. The adults, they go for uh, Marif for two hours. The rabbi goes also. You go home, eat something. You came back in again till 9 o'clock. So, uh, they go on day by day, except Shabbos and holidays. That's how it was before. The town was divided. We had a, a river going through the town was up. One side lived people like we. We lived among the Gentiles also, and all kind of people. But but we, we, we they kept everything just almost like the Orthodox. But we didn't have those backishes or strammel that thing. Uh, Simple, simple people, but my father prayed every morning, Talas and Twill. Why? I, I remember why. Because when you young, you want to sleep in the mo especially, and he always, get up, get up, get up, get up, and he, he prays and all, the, all the time. And you were waiting for a minute more, a minute more. And when they came to Shemonesre, you have to stay and you cannot talk. And we were waiting until we, he got to that. We knew that we were going to have three minutes. After that, sure, we had to get up. You get up, you dress all two, three, and you go feed the cows. I had friends, Hungarian kid. When I came back, he, gave, he, he got me that picture. We played, okay, we were kids, but we still find a way when to play. How do you play? Uh, when do you play? When it's in summer, you have to clean up those cows. So you, the river is half a mile from our house. You go with the cows, you let them in the water, you ride them, and you wash them, but you play around. We find a way how to play. That's fun. We didn't have soccer ball because it was uh, very expensive in toys. I don't remember our parents buying uh, toys. We had food enough, but other people didn't have that food also. But still, life was, as I remember, nice, beautiful, because for at least for us, because you had what to eat, and a lot of kids didn't have that. You had milk, we had everything, things like that. Besides, uh, we didn't have my, uh, because my father was all, almost every two years in the army, nobody was working on the fields. So what my, mo did my, what my mother did is she rented out. And when fall came, then they bring you in hay, they bring you in potatoes, they bring you in everything what they, it grows. So that's that's how, so we had everything but to eat. Everybody had a, a, a cellar. You keep the potatoes, they were six, seven months, not like not those. They were good. You have, you had, uh, everybody had a little garden, you have over there. Apple, you have pears, plums, whatever it grows, you so we weren't hungry. We had what to eat.
first of all, before you, you couldn't hear uh, the, the, the kids, uh, Jew, stinking Jew, things like that, Bido Jido, it wasn't there before. They didn't touch us because we fought back. We were, we were, we didn't have that bias, and we were left among them. So we we learned how to fight. We, they, they were afraid of us because there were a few kids who were really bad kids. But the those kids who died with those bias, they when they pulled those bias. They made fun of those and things like that. But it wasn't still there wasn't that the adults didn't do that first. But later on as it started, 39, 40, suddenly you have those papers. They had Mojar Futar, Tolnoy, in every paper. You got more, more of those uh, articles against the Jews every time, every year. I know, I know that because I like to read. And where, where in our house in front there was a, a, a barber shop, and he got every week new papers. And I was a kid. I always went in when I had time, and I, I, I like to read. So, and everything was about the Jews. It went on, and then, then suddenly, you have on the stores in 1939, new, new law. Jew cannot have a store. You can be the owner, 49%, the Gentile has to be 51. Otherwise, you cannot have the store. You cannot have a vineyard. Because the town, around the town, you have those little mountains, and everybody had, not everybody, a lot of people had a vineyard. A vineyard, like for growing grapes. 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 In Saturday, Sunday, Saturday you go out and, and you, you rest. In Sunday, you even sell wine if you have some people came out, and they rest every, every Sunday. It was like this, but and they have they have in those in those mountains you they make tunnels and they have their own cellar. So, so it wasn't big, ten acres, twelve acres, but other people had that. So you couldn't have it. They took it away. That's what I know. What I know. What. I was then already 10 years old. Suddenly, they, it came a, a, a new law. People who didn't have Hungarian citizenship, and a lot of people didn't have that because they came from Poland, from Galicia, as they called it that time, Ukraine, and they didn't have. So they took them away. They took them away. And there were a lot of those people. We had those uh, Hasidim also from Belzer, I think. Belzer, we called, they called that. Okay, our Hasidim didn't like them. They fought always. They fought, that's as, as usually, but they took them also away. I don't know what happened to them, but they, in six months after that, they took us away. First, first of all, they took every man from, I think, from 18 till 55. Some of them were in, still in the army. They let them go. They gave them shovels and they organized those, uh, but uh, they call it uh, working battalions. Some of them they went to Ukraine, digging the trenches again against the, the Russian tanks. Some of them went in, inside, in, deep in the Hungary, Hungary, 
like my father, they were uh, more uh, luckier because those di people died over there in Ukraine, a lot of them. But they still were, were better off than we. And then they took us so at home. There were there was women and children left and old people. That's it. There was no, no man, no, no healthy man at home. They gave us 24 hours to pack everything. They're going to take us to Hortobaja. There's a place in Hungary. It's nothing grows there. So they said they're going to build us a city for the Jews. People were very naive. They believed everything. So we took us away. Took us away in, in those railroad wagons, they were closed, just do have that little window and that people, kids. And so it wasn't, so it was something, I don't know, but so my, my, my father somehow find out that, that the, the railroad is going to stop in Kosice. He came with two Hungarian officers, he opened the, the thing, the, 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 the door, and he brought some bread and a pail of uh, soup. And, so, and, and then he, they left. He must have bribed, bribed them because he, the officers, they came. And, but, when you are in a kitchen, you can make, they make money. They somehow, I did, never asked them how they did, but I know my father, he was good at those things. We were four brothers and four, and four, and four, and four, and four, four girls. The, my sister was the oldest. He was, she was 16. Beautiful, strong girl, but so, when they put us back in that wagon, my father had uh, gives, uh, put those things and also a little bottle. Why I'm telling you, because maybe that saved my life, I don't know. So a little bottle, they called it Hungarian Borses. It's something, it's, it's a, they use that if somebody gets uh, sick or, or he lost his ma his uh, conscious. He, they put under his nose, and then was, you came alive. Some some kind of of, of, of liquor. I don't have something of, of an alcohol. I don't know what that is. They call it shosh borses. Shosh means salty. Uh, uh, says means alcohol. Uh, I was in that, in that, I was warm, kids, women, they, they, they crying, and so and I was sitting in a corner, I didn't care too much, I do wear a lump somehow. I smelled that, smelled that, smelled that. I remember one thing, my grandfather looked out on the window, he said, no, they're not gonna take us to, the Hungary. We going to Poland. He knew because he was five years in Russian in the First World War. He was a prisoner of 
uh, or prisoner over there. So he knows, perhaps, he knows. knows. So we came to Auschwitz. We came to Auschwitz. You already can imagine how, what situation you are. There was a lot of kids uh, and, and women, and <coughs> we came down, and people were moving, thousands and thousands of people ahead. And they were in the prisoners, the old prisoners. They were helping the Germans to manage those, the, 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 the crowd. They were from both sides. They had also the sticks. And, I had to go ahead, I had, I had it. And, and you had to throw everything down, nothing. I had my suitcase. My mother prepared, I had from home, but we took, I don't know what they put, there was it. But uh, they all put down everything. And I didn't want, because I think I smelled a few times, and I was already a little bit uh, not, I didn't want to put her down. My mother yelled at me. I remember what she said, because I never cried. Somehow uh, I cried that she said, I'm, cry I'm telling you the last time, put her down. So I, uh, in a minute, the, 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 the crowd, well, so, so, many, so many people, they disappeared. I never saw them anymore. I never saw them anymore. I put it down because I saw how they beat people who didn't put down. I had my father's new costume. I had a his jacket on me. They would try to see everything. So, so I looked pretty big, I think. So and then I. One guy, one guy, one of those uh, prisoners, the old one, come here. How old are you? I said, uh, 14. He was, I wasn't 14, even 13, so three months almost, to, almost 14. He said, don't say that, say you were 16. So I, I didn't have time to think about, I pushed, the, Crowd front went ahead, ahead, and there was the Mengele, the Mengele. So he didn't even ask me how old I am. Um, um, I think he asked, but I, I forgot a lot of things. He just looked like this right, left, right, left. Left, I saw over there I, people standing in the line, and, and here, there are people all probably couldn't move, they were sitting there waiting, waiting for something. And they went, and this, they moved ahead, so they went straight to, to the crematorium. I didn't know that I read at that time. So I saw those, they, those people, they were sitting, I thought I, I am, I went, I was tired also. You know, one of those guards, they saw that I, I was sent there. He just kicked me, and so I realized I have to go there. They were standing, adults, people were in line. I was standing also in the line. So we were standing, it was already night. Finally, he came in, a huge saal. You have a ton of others, a mountain of hair. There was a mountain of shoes, and there was papers, everything. You had to dress up, everything naked, naked. They took everything away. So, finally, it came them, they put the tattoos on our hand. And in the morning we came out, we didn't recognize nobody, each other. We got those striped uh, clothes, everything. We got the tattoos and that's it. In the morning we already knew 
where our parents are, where our... So we knew that what, what's going on. We were not assigned yet to blocks. We were just a lot of blocks. You went whatever you block you want, you went down. But we already talked to each other from the old, old prisoners. They told us, if you can, as soon as they're going to take somebody to work, they go from here, stay away from here. They just disappear. So I was all by myself. I, I knew uh, my mother is gone with the kids. I thought my sister may be, because she was a tall girl and, and strong one, I thought she is going to be also, but it, I re later real realized that, that that's it's impossible because I know she, my mother had those little kids. As you can see, she might have take one, took one kids, and if you have a kid, you're going to go with the kids. We were standing for hours. They came. Uh, they need 25 or 30 people. So we jumped on that rock. First, the group, uh, we, we supplied the Auschwitz and the whole region with coals. It was a coal mine. The first thing when we came, I was bitten. I I I, I was bitten, but uh, no, not it wasn't uh, didn't hurt. I didn't know why. We were standing before we saw the camp. Ten feet fence all around. And over the fence you have those wires, everything. But we are standing. I don't know what, 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 why we are staying, but we are approximately an hour. Then came a guy, a prisoner, not a German, a prisoner. He was a couple or something. I didn't, that didn't know that why. He just hit me like this. From, I fell right away. It, it didn't hurt, just somehow my balance went up. I went, went up and again. <laughs> and again, so then came over another one, and he asked me in a Polish Jew, he asked me, you know why? I will ne never put your hand in the pocket. And I had my hand in the pocket. What did I know? I was standing like, like the rest. So that's, but nothing, nothing, uh, that's it. It didn't hurt, nothing, absolutely. The old prisoners were locked down. Usually when, the, when the new newcomers came, they didn't let them communicate with the old ones. We came in, and the next day, you got those wooden boots. We called it Holland Papuch. Papuch means when you put down at home something, when you take off your shoes, <laughs> you're not going to wound the slippers. But the wooden ones, for one piece, you put your feet in, you cannot bend your feet. You just have to pull or push your feet and don't bend because you bend a lot that you're going to have blood all over you there, dude. And we were in those, in those boots for a week. Every day they taught us those uh, how to march. How those languages, uh, Rex, Lynx, uh, Hold, Marsh, and Abstalung, Halt, just like the military did, day by day for a few days. And beat, they beat every day. Every day you were beaten for something. The smallest thing you got beaten. But so you, they broke us a, a little lot. <coughs> the, a lot of people didn't know how to. They were always blood full of food. But we learned, the boys, they will learn fast, but you don't have to bend. You just hold your feet straight and you pull your feet in and just, and that's how you walk. 
Soon, behind, for, for us, it was a, f a game. All, everything was a game, a bad game, but a game. And that's how it went. The first, first two, two days, uh, they took us, a few of those, we went to, to the, they took us in the, the, in the mine, but we were for two, three days, not, not more. Then they decided that they needed upstairs us. So some of those went, we worked on uh, construction, and the rest we worked for the mine. So what we did, what did we do? We uh, we had a, there was a knife, two knife, two handled knives. You peel the the from the trees, the bark. They cut those things and they use it in the mine. When you take off the, the take out the coals, you have to put back. Otherwise, it after everything. So we did that. So in one of those days, they asked for somebody who can take, who can handle horses. We had horses. I am sure enough, I was lucky. So I got the job. It was heaven for me that and the people worked. And I, I did. First of all, I had to go to the, every day to the to the kitchen, and I got those uh, beets. There are beets. They are they may, used to make sugar of it. They are sweet, sugar beets. I think uh, that's how they call it. Uh, they call it sukorepo in Hungarian. Uh, the name of it. It was just you, you eat it. It's 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 it's, uh, it's sweet, and. They made a soup for the people, if not. And we, for the horses, we got those just dry one. Every day a few of, we had hay for them. And that, so that's what I ate because I had, I got my, my portion anyway. But the rest, what the guys get, everybody got the same portion. Even the adults who that high and even the kids. So we are better off to survive than they, because your body is much smaller, and, and you don't work as as you, you much easier for you to move like, like this. So the first three months are the most critical. If you survive the first three, three, four months, you have a chance to stay alive. But the most of the people died, even the three years, Third, the fourth, three, four months, the first one. As the, especially the Hungarians. And besides, there was an, a little animosity between the Hungarians and the Polish Jews. We had all, all kinds of people. You had Greek, also Jewish kids. They didn't know that they're Jewish. You ask them, who are you? Broken. German. He said, Greco, Greco. You know, I was in a bunk bed on, on the top, and I heard the kid is some, some kind, some, I heard a few words, he, Hebrew, very, uh, very um, familiar. I asked him, who are you? He said, Greco, Greco, Greco. And then I, 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 I went a closer, I heard that Shemani was Dava, he was Dava praying, the Shemanesre. I said, you, you're Jewish, no, Greco. They didn't, they didn't know what this you Jew means. Okay, they were from French. They were from, from all kinds of people, Hungarians, Yugoslavs, you know, and, and, yeah, Romanian and, and Hungarian. But they, the, the most who suffered, who died sooner, they are Hungarians, or the people who were they sophisticated, they had a good life at home, uh, the most educated. Uh, we were uh, used to work at home. You, you work every day. And, and besides, uh, the people from our region, 
they most of those people they were uh, worked on fields and they were uh, they were not that well educated but they were uh, better to survive so we worked i worked with those horses for a maybe a month and a half or two i was lucky and then my luck turned upside down uh, i had an idea to uh, i clean them every day i and i feed them and it, was, it came the summer it was warm i decided to wash them up I took them out from the stable, and sure enough, he got on his hind leg. He he picked me up, and I let them go. So they are not. I used to our horses. They were working every day. They, they were happy, and they, 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 and they can stand on their feet. And those guys, the young ones, so in short, they run around inside in the camp. And I was afraid that God forbid they they gonna touch the the wire, they gonna die or what? Then they are gonna kill me. So finally, somebody called them, and I lost my job. So they put me uh, to work with that thing. Uh, to we call it Holtz Commando. They were uh, one commando who cut the tree, one commando who, who just. Who, who, who cleaned the bark, and that's, so we're about, most, we're all kids. I mean, starting by 15 up to 18, and no adults. And we had one Pulak, we had one Pulak, four arbiter. There is, there is a few people who, who consider we consider them allied in the camp. Electrician. They were well fed. You could see their faces were so smooth. You could see those. Uh, Taylor, two of those do work for the for the SS. They make them uh, their uniform to fit, things like that. And you have uh, um uh, barber, we had to have our hair. We had no hair. We had to be sh shaved every, every, every. We had to be cleaned. You have to give them credit. This, this camp was very clean. We had to be clean. The miners, when they came out from the mine, they go to the bathroom. They pick off your their shirt. They, you have a jacket and a trousers. That's it. You leave it there. You and you wash yourself fast. Everything has to be fast in time and run naked. Summer or winter naked, you run in in the block. There you have on your bed. Everybody has assigned a bunk. There are three liars, so and you, you, there's your number, uh, let's say 83224, bed number 71, you have over there. You put that blanket, you have a blanket, and you have a pillow. Pillows made from wooden uh, things, uh, like, like, like straw thin. So it was a square. It was hard, but it was still a pillow. Then you get up, you have to put nicely everything tipped up. It has to be like, I paid the price because mommy wasn't there to, to make it nicely. So I got again bitten, but also uh, I later <coughs> were thinking I was still lucky because they had still mercy on me because they have, there is a cable inside wire and when you smash, you feel it. They used to beat people.
people, there was a special um, table. They, we call it bunk. So you you put your feet in a box, you lie down, your skin is tight, they'll lock your hand over there, and you got some of the people got 15, 20, they got some of them, they got 25, but, but you, you don't survive that. Very few people. You, you came back, we had the, the, the block, everybody has assigned, as I said, everybody has no, has no number of that. You came back from work and you didn't make your bed as exactly as supposed to because he stays, he, he stands in front and he looks, you can see if there's something is out of line, that's it, he puts your number down, you came home from work, 8.32.24, step out. You can step out, so you, so I got three of mine, so you, I didn't have to, uh, I just have to bend, that's it. The first one I got, I fell on my knees. The second one, I thought, that's it. And the third one, but it wasn't that, that much. It wasn't that, in comparison to what the, the rest of people get, that's one nothing. Okay, if you get strong one, you're not gonna sit with your rest for two months. But it was okay. I was, I was hurt, but you learned how to do it. The, the next day, I got up earlier than I supposed to, but I made that bet I supposed to be. I <laughs> said, okay, that's done. I wasn't beaten anymore, no, never. Not by a German and not by a, a prisoner. Usually we were beaten by the prisoners because they were Germans also. Everybody had different sign. The Jews had Star of David, yellow and red, the triangles, the all triangle, yellow and red. The, the, the criminals, the Germans, they had green triangle with the, with, with the sharp edge, an S, Swerfabrecher, or criminals. Then you had over there the, those, um, uh, how you call them the, here, the LGBT. We have the French, we had all kinds. They were good people, good people. Some of them very good. Uh, even to, among the Germans, you had, you had priests also, German priests. They were good people. You had Polish, yeah, you had the Polacks, the, the Christians, they had P, Poland. So every, everyone had, had his, he, he, you had no name, you had a number, you had a number, that's it. So life went on. I worked in, in that with those things, uh, with the rest of the kids. They get some more, they, all of them, most of them, they were from our region and you know, from me. Also, Yiddish speaking kids, it goes like this. You have a forearbiter, means he got a yellow band, he got the 20 people, he is responsible for the job. He, when we are outside from the camp, we work, we usually we always outside of the camp, we, we work in those, in, in those uh, constructions. They bring you the soup in daytime for 20 people or for 30, it depends how many people. And he, he divides for the, he is giving out for the kids. Uh, the, those, the, you have those, I don't know how they, we call it, they call it Kondir in German. Uh, it's a uh, back, you have for 20 people you have for 20 people, for 30, they're bigger one. That, that's that's in, in daytime. You got those soups, but this, when you have those soups, you can, you're supposed to mix it because the, the heavy thing goes down, the, the, the cabbage, 
or 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 or, or whatever they give you cabbage or those or those those beets, and, and you have just water if you get from the ba- top. <coughs> oh, there was he was a a, a Polak. I don't know how old it was because people you don't know how old because they all look. He was quite skinny. I think he was maybe, maybe at 30 years old. He was tall. At least to me, it looks tall. And every day he, besides what he got, he got doubled anyway. And besides, he didn't give everybody a, a full, you supposed to get a liter of those soup. Every little bit, every little bit counts. At least, uh, even if it's water, uh, you feel something in your in your stomach. And every day you get less uh, for everybody a little bit. And he ate. Beside that, he didn't give. Uh, every bit he changed. Now it's your turn. You just get half. And it goes on for days. For one, and then one of those days, it came to my to my turn. Uh, sure enough, uh, I complained. I told him, "Listen, uh, you you're not gonna get nothing." And he didn't give my, me nothing. He didn't give. Me. And here, one day, if you don't eat. The next day you're already weaker and weaker and it's it's easy to go down. It goes like fast, very fast. Especially if you get bitten. So today, tomorrow you're not gonna be able to do that, the job. The second day up again, it looks like uh, either I said something, but I saw he's gonna finish me. And in the case, they were all complaining, but between themselves, selves, uh, they said, we have to go to the Lager Elster and complain. Lager Elster is also a prisoner, usually a German, but he is over the prisoner. He is the guard over there. And there is a Lager Führer. He is over the just SS. That's a different. But Lager Führer, Lager Elster, who is going to complain? You can be killed. If if something he doesn't like, he is going to beat even more. You're going to get on that box. Then you're going to do it. Nobody wants to go. But we said, we we talked between them. Who is going to go? Nobody wants. Everybody is afraid. I saw I'm the second day and I didn't eat as possible. I, I, I thought it can be worse. Then when we came home, I went home. Home, we call it home. From, from the, we came to the camp back. And I got the rest, I cleaned up because you have to be over there clean and always everything had to be buttoned. Your your head has to be everything. We, we got those little margarine in the morning <coughs> on bread. I clean, I put it on my shoes. They're gonna, they're gonna be a little bit so because I know if I'm not gonna be dressed and he is gonna find something on me trouble. So I knew a little bit German at that time. I, he got an office. I, 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 do, I, I, I beat on the door and I got the command, right. So, so I'm allowed to came in. I came in, I stand three, three, three meters before him, and I reported. They numbered the, there and there, uh, ask permission to report. Go ahead. So 
I reported it to some be work there, and I told them I will work in this and that place, and we do we do our our work every day, but now we cannot I cannot do it because I didn't eat for it. He took away my food, blah 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 blah. So I told them in short, before I buy that, I, I told them. That, that, no, I, uh, I was waiting what, is, what he's going to do. Uh, one word, and, he, and I'm finished. But I had no, no, I had no, not, I had no way out. Uh, but he said, you ready? Ready. I, we can go. I returned it as supposed to be, uh, and I made three, Three steps, I was supposed to. I closed the door. Uh, and, uh, two hours, uh, we had an appell. Appell is, means every uh, roll, like a roll call. Everybody has his place. When there is a gong, everybody has to be in five minutes standing in your place. I thought, and I saw. We came over to the, the bell place. I saw the, the buck was standing. I thought, my God, I'm going to get beaten. But, but then I saw he came out also, the, the lager, the capo. Capo is more than a lager uh, for arbiter. For arbiter, have 20 people. Capo. Commands with four, five, four arbiters. He divides, but he oversees all of them. He calls up his name, the four arbiters, but his number. He steps out, and then he calls up our our command. Our we are twenty people. We put them on 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 on, on that pink, on the on that buck, and he t told us to, to each each of, all of us to be to beat them once one, one. Sure enough, we didn't we didn't beat them as supposed to, but they yelled at us, so we beat them, so we beat them, everybody. But that's even <coughs> even uh, we beat them so uh, light. They took down his band to put it on my hand. You can imagine I was happy, but sure I was happy, but uh, I don't know, I don't know what, um, somehow I, I didn't feel very good. I was happy, yeah, but I didn't feel very good because I didn't know what's going to happen after that. Oh, the next day I was the forearm biter. We go, went out, and we worked, the kids work. We did, we did our like before. We did even faster because we want to rest. So one, one was always a lookout. Is if, if if somebody came over, so we were supposed to work. We don't supposed to stay. There's no such a thing. So we always left two, three pieces. So we left what to do. So we went on for a, for a month or two, but I had double, double what to eat. I mixed it as supposed to be because otherwise they would, they would, they would eat me up. And so, and I know how would that feel. So besides, there was always, no matter how you, you can always put your hand, go around, you can always have a half a liter, a liter. Then that, that's it's a lot. It's a lot because can you imagine my weight, my weight in, in his weight, uh, an adults. But so I had always a little bit more than than the rest. So it went on for a little time. It was it wasn't bad. It was good for for at least for us. And then. This end ended. It came, came winter, 
and they didn't have enough people to work on brick layers. In winter, people doesn't lie brick because the, the malter, as they call it, it freezes. But we had enough coals, and we had those, they call it cox oven. It's, it's like a barrel, but it's, instead of having a wall around it, it's open, it just has the, uh, uh, metal uh, things around. So it was, you threw in, in the coals, and every, uh, around you, five, three, four meters, you got to feel warm. So they had those, and they put it up when they lied, the, where they where they were lying the bricks, so they're not going to freeze, they're going to dry. When it's dry, nothing is going to happen. Otherwise, when, when the, the summer came, then that's it. And I was I was working in the beginning. So how we do we do we do what how we did it? There was a brick liar. He was just standing and lying those brick straight. You have to know how to do that. We were making them all that. I, I was happy that my father wasn't there because I knew, I knew he wouldn't survive because I saw my friends. I had kids from my same, uh, the same even place where I was. It was a father and two kids. The adults, they were so hungry, and the kids feed the father. father. I, I saw how they shared with the father. He ate his soup, and he took from his kids. Even he didn't want to, but he was so hungry. I saw once or twice or three times all kind of fathers with sons. I saw of the kids shared. And I was happy that I didn't have who to share. All I had to do was take care of myself. There was a kid over there, I don't know, Hungarian, I think it was. Yeah. The kids speak three languages, French, Italian, and English. He must be, uh, maybe he was uh, diabetes. At that time, we didn't know what diabetes is. But he was so hungry, he bent on his knees and he was asking for us. I got the same food as you. And people hated those. If, if, how do you ask me? Well, I have the same thing. But they are newcomer. He didn't know. He, was, he couldn't handle the I could handle the hunger. He couldn't handle the hunger. And they beat him. He went to the other one to turn and ask. The kid was, uh, okay, sure enough, it didn't last long for uh, two, three weeks. I had a friend, and a friend, I was with his brother in the same school. Schiefman was his name, they had the bakery. He was older than me. And I saw that the kid dying day by day. At that time, if you were not, uh, Gum, uh, buckled up as supposed to be. You didn't have, you had to be always in that camp, always clean and nice. We call those guys, when, when you go down, we call them Muslim. There's a slang in, that, in the camp. Muslim means not a, you are a Muslim. You are, you are gonna die. You go see, you see every day his, uh, um, this, they came out, you see, this, and I asked the kid, I gave me, I have soup enough. I, 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 I cried for him, I begged him, eat, eat. So it looks like he was depressed. He was smart already. He knew what the situation is. I didn't know. I know I have to survive, and, and, and I had to eat, and I had to do this, and I had to look how, where to get more or that. So that's that. That's what keep me going. When I was looking at those kids with their fathers, I was always happy that I don't have my father here. Thank you.
That, then when we had to march day and night, day and night, then a lot of people were shot because they couldn't, couldn't, couldn't go and anymore. There was no, there wasn't, uh, we had no, 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 uh, you couldn't move anymore because you were, were they, they, the SS, even they couldn't, it was hard for them to, to go. They came thousands and thousands of, of people from the, the, all the sub camps. They were in one colony. When the colony went ahead, you, know, all, you always hear, pack, 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 pack. They, you were behind. They shoot them. We can't move. They, they put us. On the way, on a wagon, on on a wagon, on open railroad wagon, open without uh, without uh, uh, roof. Uh, in fact, uh, I couldn't get up because it was that high. We were already dead. We couldn't walk anymore. So somebody looks like I was hit. Hit, I blacked out. I was just woke up. But people are lying on me already. There were a lot of people inside. In short, slowly but slowly, people start to die. So we put them one of the, over another. We took out their play, their uh, blanket. In the fourth or fifth days, we already had. We could lie down. And it was good. We didn't, we didn't get to eat, feed for eight or nine days, but it wasn't the bad. It was the worst was the hunger, the the, the thirst, the thirst, not the hunger. Always, I thought when I'm gonna came home, I'm gonna go in that river and I'm gonna drink and drink and drink and drink. So we were lying there for eight or nine days. There was enough room already because they, they, they were frozen. They were, they, were, they, were, they put them nicely because they didn't let us throw it out from the wagon because every wagon had an SS outside. He had a, a little place where he stayed there. And he, he shoot inside and if, if you throw it, somebody out. So finally we came to, to Dora, Dora, uh, Nordhausen. Huge camp. They took us down from there, with stretchers, because we couldn't walk anymore. Stretchers, they put us in that washroom People start to drink, so they put hot, hot and cold water, cold water, hot water, so you won't get able to drink. And that's when people start to die because they got diarrhea. They put us in a huge saal. It's supposed to be a, like a kino theater, something like this. So we are on the full floor, we are lying on the, on, on, on the, on the ground. And, and you can imagine people had the diarrhea, what, what was going on in that thing. That was the worst, at least for me. You couldn't go in in, in toilet because everything was, it's, it's, people were already dead. But, but we were lying there and, and nothing was good. You lay down, they tried to bring in food. 
potatoes, two potatoes for people. But it's impos impossible to people didn't stay in line. They are like like animals. They are running, and they beat it. So I I got beaten. Also also I got once over my over my, uh, my back. I did even try to get to that foot. I went back to lie down in the morning. They woke up us up every every day, and we had to go out and stay out. People who couldn't couldn't stay. Who left were well, lying. They picked them up and threw them on on a on, on a way on a huge wagon there, and they put them on. You see. There is moving car, leg. There is hand. The people are alive, but they were already. They couldn't get out, and we were standing. There was the hardest thing was to stay five or ten minutes, you were holding all to the wall, so no dollar fall down. Because when you fall down, they put you on the wagon and they took you away. So that was for four or five days. Finally, they took us from there. They cleaned up everything. They assigned us to a block. We were, or we were sitting there, lying there. We feed us three times a day. They just put down the, the, the food and we ate and we didn't have to work for the three, three, four weeks. And we came, we, we came back to our life, slowly, 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 it was heaven. There is a huge granite mountain where they made the tunnels, there were tunnels made. Thousands and thousands of people died before us who, who built this. And so we went, we were, they had to put something in food because the, we were so numb. So I remember not nothing interesting. You do work, go work. Every little thing you did something wrong, they hanged you. It was hanging every day, people, every day. And so you, I worked in, in a... In a, in a well, like a warehouse, I had given tools. They, they made they made their those rockets. What they, they used to send to London, V one, V two. They call it V W, and, but they call it in German called V one, V two, to London. It's a huge rocket and made. 10, 12 people used to carry out from the empty shell. And, and they, they uh, some place they, uh, they, they put it together. But we did, um, everybody did some kind of job. You couldn't go inside every minute where you were, they were checked. You go in the toilet, you have to be minute by minute back. I couldn't see what's going on in the next in the, in the, in the next uh, shop. So I just give out that I had a boss. I think he was also something, a forced laborer. He wasn't a prisoner. A good guy, he didn't talk much. He just showed me how to wear the tools, what the name of it, and I learned fast. Uh, there was in the German. Uh, there was the name of it. You put everything when you get it in, and you get it out when they came. We worked there for a four, five weeks, and then they find they were looking every time the airplanes. They are looking for that place. They knew that there was something, but they couldn't find it because. When you go in that in that thing, in that uh, tunnels, if if they see a airplane, 
Suddenly it came, the a gate came down, and the little trees on it. So it's, it's messed. You cannot see it from what it is. But you find it anyway because they saw the railroads go to the mountains and stop there. It was a huge place. So short, in a, in a few days, we knew we were already, either you're going to kill us or we're going to be free. They gave us a, uh, something salt, salt, a conserve, in a, in a, a, a conserve, some horse meat, I think was it. It was salted in, in bread. And we went in, in, I had already, uh, I knew already, I had experience how to do it. I went inside, I, I threw that away, that meat. I put in that, in that can water. I, I sit in, in the corner because I don't know, I didn't know how far we're gonna go. You sit down in the corner because I'm gonna be, uh, my back is gonna be secured from two sides. I just have to fight from front. But what happens, you eat, I eat the bread, I drink water, and I took another water, and I put it behind me, and people eat that meat. And it was warm, and it started. They were looking water, water. You, it's dark, you go, somebody is looking for you, you just put your finger in your half eyes, you push them away, because everyone, I was fine, I had, finally I finished my water also, and that's it, and fine. And three days after that, we came to Bern Belsen. Bern Belsen. The next day, we heard already those, the, 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 the war was close. In the morning, you saw a white flag. flag. They picked up and the SS started to move one by one. Uh, so that's, that's it. And then we start, can you imagine? Uh, and then you hear, row, row, from far. You go out, you look, you see two Germans, officers carrying one of, the, of our, uh, prisoners, uh, dead one, almost dead, and the British uh, after them with, with the rifles and they went, and then we have those car, the cars coming in uh, every uh, mi microphone in every language, they said, you are free, blah, 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 yeah, and, and, and Polish and Jewish and Hungarian and, and, and Russian, all kinds of languages. So don't, don't break in in the kitchens because it can be poisoned and things like that. We're going to feed you. You are free and we're going to help you to get home or that, things like that. You can imagine, hurrah, hurrah, you see, and right away, you see, there is one dead. There is one below the head. There is one. So people took... Uh, retaliated those guys who tortured them, those capos and all kinds. We had an August, a uh, German. He, he was sentenced for 20 years. Uh, the, the, he was, uh, beside, uh, the, he, was a, 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 he was a criminal, he was also a, a fascist. He always yelled, yelled uh, talk. We will not capitulate, we will not capitulate, we will see. He killed every day all of two people in the mine with a shovel. He was a capo. Uh, they, they caught him. They put a stick in his mouth all the way. His, so they <laughs> cleaned his fing, fing, uh, fingernails with a knife, cut it. So, for a four or five hours, they tortured him. 
until they, they, they kill them. But and then all all kind of things. But that was the first thing what people did. And all kind of thousands and thousands of people. I was looking around and, and, and I I blessed, I passed out. I don't know for how long, but I I I woke up on the floor in 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 in, in, in I was looking for the, the for the kids. Yeah, we were, I find them. For those uh, my friends who were in the camp, and we started to venture went out. We had already all kind of. Some of them had granats. Some of them had uh, pistolets. I had a little Browning. So we went free. You go you go out. You cannot imagine that feeling. You see trees, grass, free, everything. To, to, you have to go through to, to feel that feeling. You cannot imagine. You go and you always look right or left because we used to be the SS in the dogs. For two weeks, you couldn't, you couldn't uh, do without looking or you right or left, because you were always waiting to, he is going to escort you. We went from one village or another one. Usually we were aware of, of that we have the Germans maybe in, in the woods, they were around, all around. Uh, we, we knew that we have to be aware, maybe they had guns, but we had also, but, but nothing happened. When we were liberated, we had we were three or four kids who were been to the whole thing, and we were we became friends over there because he helped we helped each other. Most of the time, I I helped them because I was always I don't know I didn't I wasn't smart I just was lucky I was lucky. And they said, "Why are you going home?" I said, "Listen." We, we decided that we're gonna go either to Israel to camp those against those to build the country or to the United States. We didn't know where we gonna go. So I said, listen guys, I go home. I know my father. I wanna see, I have to go home, I have to see those uh, I have to see, I have to go. I'll get back. They said, where are you going? You have nobody, you have no mother, no father, no house, nothing. What are you going there? And they, a lot of people, that's how they thought. They didn't care about the houses, nothing. Uh, fields now, uh, absolute nothing. Let's go. We are young, 16, 17, 18 years. Let's go. I said, no, I want to go. And, and uh, I went. I jumped on the train. I, 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 then first they took us to Pilsen because I said, we are Czech. We are, I, I didn't know that there's uh, uh, Russians are there. I didn't know. So Czech, they took us to Pilsen. And they fed us, they British. And, uh, and then to Pilsen, I saw there were Russians who were there also. Okay. In short, somehow I, I find over, over there uh, a woman who came over. She, I think she is Jewish. She, she was Jewish. She took me to a bakery and they gave me a bread, but she said, don't stop speak Hungarian. Don't speak Hungarian. So, because they didn't like the Czechs, the Hungarians, they always fought. So, and then she disappeared. And then I, I was among people I was going there. People are moving back and forth. The whole world was moving. You you go, you go to a station. You don't know where where you, go. you don't know where to ask how to ask. Finally, you, you I I knew that the station goes. Somebody told me it goes to the Hungary. No, Hungary it means Budapest. So we went. I came to Budapest. We were the, over there, I was a little bit organized already. There was the joint or was, or who, I don't know. 
but they put us in a school called Ergy Betty School. And we, they fed us over there. Now I have to go home. I no, how do I, how do I know where uh, Munkach is? I didn't know where Munkach is. I asked one guy, and I, nobody, everybody moves. Who, the, the whole thing was moving around. Finally, somehow, they told me there is a, a train, jump to that train. I jumped to that train. And, and I know one thing, but we have a castle <laughs> in, in, the, in our town. You can see that castle from 10 miles far. I was always looking through the window. I thought maybe the train is not going to stop. But if I, if I saw those castles, I knew I am already in Munkach. I, then I jumped down the train and that's it. That's what happened. I saw from far, really, maybe the train would stop in Munkach. I didn't do it. I just jumped and I went another five miles or so. Um, I jumped near, I went straight with, with the rail, rails. I came to a station, and, and, and there is a, a guy in, 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 in police, uh, they call it Militista. The guy worked for us before. We, we went to, together, we cleaned the, the cows. He saw, he was in the forum, he saw me, Okay, he didn't, he confused my name and my brother's name. He said, it's you, that's you? Yeah, yeah. I said, yeah. Come, your father is home. Oh, yeah. He took me first to the militia, militia and they gave me a papers. And he took me home. Sure enough, my father was home. I see my father, and, and he's not in, my, in our house. He's across the street. I said, why? I, I was white. I said, why? Why do you let them, the, the Hungarians in our house? Oh, you can do nothing. Don't worry. They, they're going to go out in a week. Why in a week? In my house, somebody. So I, 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 I had that guy. He took it right away from me. Uh, so you were I, angry when you got home. What? You were angry. Sure, because uh, in my house, in my father is not in my house. I said, why did you let that? He said, there is a law. They're going to take it out. Uh, Hungarians? No, he is not Hungarian. She is Hungarian. He is, he is a routine. Routine. Is there... Was your father, like, did you cry when you saw each other? Was no, no, no. My father is like this. He is a good guy, but... My father, I, I suppose, uh, thinking back, uh, I understand him. He is a survivor. He, he lost a wife and kids, and he was already looking for, for another woman. He is a survivor. It's not, I don't blame him. And at that time, I wasn't jealous, but it hurt me. It hurt me because when he brought a woman home, and, and, and she was... Uh, she was trying to hold me. I mean, I couldn't do what I want in my house. And I didn't understand that she is young. She is 22 years younger than him. The, the girls came home from the camp. They had nobody to marry. So, and there were a few older guys. They all married the young girls. Did okay. your father ever ask you what happened to you during the war? Never. Never. My father, and he didn't tell me even what happened to him. Did you have time to even grieve for your mother, your brothers and no. sisters? No. No. I was the first first time I was thinking then I I remember I just fell down. I didn't any more think of not since then. Never. Never. And somehow life was so busy that people didn't have nothing. But people were looking for fats. People were looking for cigarettes. People were looking for food. 
behead. My father had all everything already. He was already managing. He was already uh, having a partner. They opened a sausage shop. They opened butcher store. Uh, he was already. Uh, I said, this night I want to move away. I left my breath and he said, why? Uh, stay, stay. I am also going to go. But first we're going to make a little money. Then we go. And, and, and I stayed. But at that time, you could still leave. leave. But later on, and he somehow didn't ask me. And I don't remember even. OK, they feed me. They, they ate. The girls came home. They didn't go back to the, the villages where they are because they had nobody there, no, no parents, nothing, no house. They came to the town, to Mugaj. Mugaj was a, a, a city, but you had opportunity. They, everybody is gathered in Mugaj. The joint, I think, was there. So they opened a, a, they call it a Schwarz or Schweiner, where they made clothes, things like that. The girls, they worked there. And they, they find them a place where they were sleeping there. And slowly, slowly, they married. They came home, they married. People, some of them stayed, some of them, but most of them moved, moved away. But my father didn't let me. Uh, he said, stay, stay, and um, I was staying because I would be used to uh, listen to the parents who were brought up in this way. Uh, parents are parents, and you have to respect them and things like that. So did you ever tell them what happened to you during mm, the No. My granddaughters, you know, sometimes they ask, so I tell them, tell them as little as possible. Why? Because they they do they, they, they won't understand. And not just him. I tell nobody. I I didn't because people sometimes don't won't believe that. People don't believe what what you went through. But you you, you can't tell. He's not gonna believe you. But anyway, and especially, I don't. I don't tell uh, there's a lot of people the Gentiles because they enjoy it. I used to go in the J in the J uh, work work out for years. Uh, and in J, yeah, in the J. I used to work out and we had became always we are sitting in the thing in the steam room. We were talking, they saw my tattoo, they asked, What is this? I said that my mother had a lot of kids. In order not to confuse them, so she tattooed. I didn't, I didn't. Okay, they knew it's not true. Uh, they asked me, listen, is Ribas really so bad over there? I said, no, it wasn't so bad. So the coffee was cold in the morning. Nobody asked you, how did you sleep? That was bad. But, but uh, because I know they enjoy it. So I don't, I, I didn't, I don't like. Okay, sometimes when my when something be my sons, when sometimes uh, when something happens, it's associated with, with those things happened. Then I tell them a little story, but no, they, they don't ask, and I don't tell them. Did you have bad dreams? Do you dreams? Yeah. Did, I mean, it was a trauma, right? I mean, no, I I didn't have dreams, but I, I for. For years, maybe a year or two, I always was there. I always was there. Not dream. I always was there. And then I cut it, and I never thought. And I never went back. I never think back. Now, when I'm getting old, sometimes it comes to my mind. And at night, I don't know the last time, the last maybe because I don't. Um, but uh, I try to forget, and I forgot a lot of things. Do you feel uh, angry? Do you feel no. cynical? No, no, no. Uh, I feel cynical, yeah, but not angry. 
because, because I feel that, that, that it doesn't do nothing. All, all I know, I was angry because I was thinking bad. I was 13 years old, and I couldn't understand how the hell people let go let themselves like, like cattle. Why didn't they go as partisans? In the, uh, okay, I could hide. I could hide, and I wanted to hide because we had a priest. He was somehow we good friends with my father, and he helped us a lot of out. And he we, we helped them also. I could hide by him. Okay, he, I didn't do that because his wife was of her. A uh, daughter, a uh, bishop's a daughter, Ungvar. Uh, she was a fascist, but he was a good man. He told me, "You can, you can hide over there in, in, the, in the barn." And the, the, I did. I I know it's, it's not gonna work because of her, but I could hide. I couldn't. I don't. I didn't want to go in the ghetto. I said, "My, my mother." Okay, with eight kids, where can she hide? If she would be the one, two kids, we would find enough place where to hide. But people let themselves go with like, that's, that's what bothered me all the time. Like cattle, couldn't go fight, couldn't you go die? I was 13 years old, I didn't, I was a rebel always. And that's what it didn't. That what bothers me. But sin, that, but cynical, yeah, I was cynical because I knew that if you're not gonna fight, nothing is gonna happen. There, talk. This is talk, talk. You have to fight back, and that's it. Maybe I am wrong. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I am skeptical of everything. If you weak, they're gonna do that with you. You have to be strong. That's why uh, I I uh, admire Israel. No, I'm not a Zionist. I'm not a Zionist, but I admire because because Israel does the right thing. He's fighting. He's preparing people to fight, and and, and that's it. But uh, that but that but I. Uh, I don't know why, but later in life, I saw uh, not just we, the Jews, but I saw the other four people they were also just like Jews, almost. I'm not that smart. I'm not philosophical about it, but sometimes I just think that's it gives you nothing. If you are strong, that's it. You have to be strong, that's it. That's, that's, I don't recognize nothing else, but I see that's how it goes. You cannot persuade people, uh, even if they go with you, I mean, they, they agree with you, as soon as it turns, they're against you. Ah, ah. I, I, I am very skeptical of that.